So now to the real business, to formally welcome you, open the Congress, chair the rest of the day, I hand you over to the lady whose vision is global, focus is crystal clear, energy is unbounded, who made this event happen, please welcome your president, Monica. Against all adversity, we have made it. And I must give my heartfelt appreciation to all of you um, who are here today, delegates and presenters. 22 countries are represented, including four new to the PTI circle. Tunisia, Austria, Colombia, and Brunei. And special welcome to all newcomers. Okay. Do you know what important anniversary in human exploration falls today? Okay. <laughs> I didn't think you would know. In, in 1673, Louis Joliet and Jacques Marquette began exploring the Mississippi River, and I feel in a similar, similar position. Can we judge the extent of our tasks ahead? There will certainly be many twists and turns unexpected currents and setbacks, as I have discovered since our last World Congress in 2004. We have had to contend with big changes in global society. The rise of power of China relative to the United States and Europe, the continued proliferation of electronic media, the considerable economic threats posed by too much risk debt and investment. I see the danger of these factors will lead to countries and individuals turning inwards, making it even more difficult for us to promulgate the importance of taking care of the minds of our children, especially the younger ones. Jeff, with his commercial background, supports the concept of free trade across national borders. I want to see free trade in therapeutic methods across professional boundaries as well as between countries. So, against this background, I have to report a mixed set of results using the three pillars that I proposed at the Congress in 2004. Professionalism, diversity and inclusion. Professionalism, promoting the cause, limited success. We have established new islands of play therapy in more countries outside the UK and North America. But apart from Ireland, which has more play therapists per capita than any other country, progress is too slow. PTI has supported the setup of 15 new affiliates, but in too many cases, the initial enthusiasm is not followed by commitment. <coughs> so do we have the wrong model? I don't know. No one else is doing better. So I really would welcome your ideas on this point. PTI has decided to avoid setting up projects, which is the easy bit, because you're in, you organize the project, and you're out again. What we are trying to do is to use sustainable conditional programs, which enable the countries to proceed in stages, depending upon the result of each stage. For more information, ask Jeff. <laughs> Research, a huge success. Led by the UK and Ireland, and with contributions from Malaysia, Ethiopia, and some European countries, we have the largest continuing play therapy research program in the world. Our database has over 7,500 outcome measures from 350 practitioners and 6,000 clients. We can now prove <coughs> the effectiveness of play therapy and convincingly argue our corner with funders and other professionals. Between 70 and 84% of children receiving play therapy from practitioners trained to PTI standards show a positive change. The research database is also starting to tell us which activities the children use in the playroom. And we are adding further features to integrate the individual research work of our members, which of necessity has been on a small scale, so that they will obtain better leverage from their efforts. Apparently, this is called pragmatic 
psychological approach. So ask Jeffrey about it. <laughs> Professional conduct, reasonable uh, progress. PTUK and PTI have changed their complaints procedure following overwhelming support for the proposal in the re recent referendum. <clears throat> the changes give a fairer balance between the complainant and our members by discouraging vexatious or politically motivated complaints and are in the realm of bringing uh, the profession into disrepute. Sorry. <clears throat> On the related subject of state regulation, we had a joint meeting with the Health Professional Council, the HPC in the UK, together with the British Association of Play Therapists, BAPT, two weeks ago. Although we are probably stuck with registration by title, we would like it by competencies, it appears that PTUK's wishes for multiple titles, a separate section for therapy for children, and the standard of training being at postgraduate level, but not making the masters compulsory, stood a good chance of being accepted. We are now working with BAPT in drawing a joint application. I've warned my grandchildren, who are three, that they will see the regulation of play therapy by the time they are ready to practice. <laughs> Although this may sound a bit parochial to delegates from outside the UK, it is an important issue. State regulation is essential to protect the public and establish the credibility of the profession. You have a better opportunity in countries where this is not being started to get it right because your countries are probably starting from a blank sheet. Again, talk to us about it if you want <coughs> further information. Improvement of practice, good progress. Since 2004, we've incorporated neuroscience into the curriculum of our accredited training providers. The use of clinical governance, clinical management has become more or less completely established. Diversity. New methods, reasonable progress. Our filial, play therapy, uh, our filial play coaching approach, as opposed to filial therapy, is growing in acceptance. There has been a very dramatic success where PTI has designed and delivered modified programs that have been used with children suffering from severe malnutrition in Ethiopia. Children of parents receiving filial play coaching gained weight faster than those children who had only been given the food. After six weeks, those receiving the intervention gained body weight twice as fast as the others who had not got the intervention. Even more importantly, there were strong suggestions that mortality rates were reduced by about a fifth, the children demonstrated increased secure attachment, and there was a substantial reduction in maternal depression. Covering different cultures, spasmodic results. Although we have successfully run training programs in Asia and Africa, and have produced good documentation, clinical results, play therapy hasn't really taken off to the degree that it should have or that we'd wanted to. Inclusion. Our two aims were that all children should have an emotional health check and easy access to services. We have been very, very limited in our success in a few corners in the UK and abroad. We really need to push that forward. So, now the question arises, why are we in Marrakesh? It would have been so much easier to have this conference in the UK for all of us. Well. The reason why we are having it here was because of our, the mission of Play Therapy Africa to build on our Ethiopian success to spread, to spread, sorry, to spread Play Therapy to other European, uh, African countries. But very few African delegates are here and none from the governments. <coughs> and that is due to the lack of Play Therapy African directors who promised to get that funding going through UNICEF and so on. This raises the whole question of sustainability without outside aid. Do we adopt lower cost and lower quality models of training and practice 
knowing that this would not be accepted in the Western world, but might be better than nothing? Again, I want you to tell me what your opinion is. So, where is PTI going? As intimated above, there have been as many disappointments as successes. Um, the following days are mainly about techniques to improve our practice, but today really gives us a chance to reflect on our future direction. Dr. Mike Schuter will start with the need to integrate the deployment of psychological professions, working together for the benefit of children. You must help us to decide what PTI's role should be in this process. Dr. Sue Gerhardt will show us how we can create a more loving society to get away from self-centered one, focusing on how adults pass on their emotional skills to the babies in their care. There seems to be an increasing amount of evidence that we should be working far more with babies, infants and parents. Our own research indicates that play therapy is most effective with five-year-olds. <coughs> this theme will be further developed this afternoon by Dr. Fraser Brown, providing the potential of play as a therapeutic tool to repair. His perspective is mainly play work. Maybe there should be more collaboration and integration between the two professions. Our final speaker today, Sir Richard Bowlby, returns us to the most significant source of emotional problems, insecure attachment, by examining the psychological coping mechanisms used by babies, toddlers, and young children, who experience disruptions to attachment relationships. Perhaps his presentation will confirm that we need to change our direction more towards younger children. Thank you, and I wish you all a really good Congress. Let's start with some fun. Drumming has been used in Africa for thousands of years. Whenever people gather together in celebration or mark an occasion, they use drumming. The reason for this is that drumming is a powerful way to get people to synchronize their energy and to connect with each other. It allows people to feel the effect that the united group has on them. This is at the center of what PTI is all about. It is about synergy between individuals, organizations, and worldwide connections. The ability of individuals and organizations' energy to magnify and to give everyone back more than they put in. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you feeling about this? 